Hi there. Today, we're going to talk about Schelling's 1809 Freedom Essay. The translation that I have right next to me is the SUNY 2006 translation done by Jeff Love and Johanna Schmidt. Um, there was another translation done in 1936, I believe, by James Gutman. And and while this is a good is, a, is an all right translation, there are some um, there are some things that can be misinterpreted in the language, um, the language of the ground and existence. Uh, Gutman translates as the basis of basis, which can be confusing for the reader that's never read anything by Schelling before. And lastly, um, one of the things that is uh, beneficial about this 2006 translation is that they follow um, the German scholar on Schelling from Munich, uh, Thomas Buchheim, um, very good uh, German translation of the Freedom Essay, which is exceptional. So if you can read the German, this is fantastic. So, the text begins a little bit afterwards of his 1804 text on philosophy and religion. So he's trying to answer questions from Eskemeyer, who was asking him questions about the nature of the divine um, in a text called Bruno. And so Schelling is struggling with trying to figure out to philosophize about the fall of man, uh, humanity and to talk about the absolute. However, there is a problematic um, uh, history of, you know, philosophizing about the absolute and cosmologies. And um, one of them is called, and the, the controversy, you know, around this is the controversy of pantheism. So the Jewish, the Portuguese Jewish thinker uh, Baruch Spinoza had written a magnum opus called The Ethics. It's a fantastic text. And in it, Spinoza kind of works off of Descartes, but attacks Descartes in a sense. So instead of having two substances, there's only going to be one substance. And the one substance is going to be the universe, the cosmos. Um, and he calls this Deo Siva Natura. Um, God or nature. So, for Spinoza, the cosmos or nature is a substance. That's the sui cause of itself. It's the cause of itself. And within this cause of itself, um, we get an infinite amount of attributes and an infinite amount of modes. Now, attributes are the way that the that substance expresses itself cosmologically. Um, you know, through endless amounts of you know, things in nature. And then there's modifications of substance, which he tends to say it's it's humans, human beings. And with that, human beings only have two um, attributes while God or nature has an infinite amount. We have um, extension and thought. So just like the two, these two attributes that are also in Descartes in early modern philosophy. So the problem with this kind of pan monism or this monistic system is that a lot of religious thinkers reacted to it because it seems like if we are modes that are in God. That would mean that there's a finite substance within God. And if that's the case, where does the finite start and where does the infinite start? And also, it kind of removes the concept of free will. As Spinoza really believed in a kind of deterministic system. Um, in the early Schelling, 
1795 or 1796 wrote a letter to Hegel. Uh, in his letter, he initially stated that he had found um, he had found a new teacher, and that teacher was Spinoza, and he was an Alice Spinozist. Um, and during a lot of his early works, he had Spinoza's Ethics right next to him. So if you read his Mein Presentatione, or My Presentation, um, he writes it in the same kind of geometrical method that Spinoza wrote his Ethics in. So um, he is um, an important influence on Schelling. However, Schelling's not really a Spinozist, and he's not really a Leibnizian either. So that's just some of the, the background in here. Schelling is accused by Jacobi of, and Hegel, I guess, um, of pantheism. But he's also accused by Hegel in the 1807, 1807 text, Phenomenology of Spirit, of homogenizing the absolute, of making the absolute a point of indifference where the identity of identity and non-identity is everything. Uh, and Hegel famously calls this the night where all black, <laughs> sorry, the night where all cows turn black. So in a sense this this essay is trying to respond to Hegel and to the critics um, the critics uh, Jacobi um, and so he uh, is trying to you know present um, a position of his system that he says um, very early that he's presented only fragments of, of, of his whole system that his um, texts up till now 1809 um, have only been you know sequences are parts that make up this grandiose whole. So the reason why for me this is such an important text is because it has so much philosophical history condensed in it. It's got Schelling's you know, very minute understanding of philosophy of nature in it, it's got some um, of his identity philosophy in it, um, and it's also his first movement into his later work um, with the Welt Elter or the Ages of the World and the Philosophy of Revelation. So it's a it's a key kind of pivotal text. So the, the beginning the beginning of the book Schelling says Philosophical investigations into the essence of human freedom can in part address the correct concept of freedom in so far as the fact of freedom. Um, the way someone like Tyler Tritton reads this, he reads this in a quasi-Heideggerian sense, that uh, the same thing with Marcus Gabriel, that this is an ontological reading. So the fact of freedom is the facticity of freedom, that we're dealing with a, an ontology of freedom. Um, 